No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I have an international artist who's been making massive waves out there on the scene. Hamza, how you doing? I'm good, bro. Did Thank I just you. say it? Did I say it appropriately? Because I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, Hamza, I'm, yeah. Hamza, Hamza. It's like in my Hamza. in my mind, I could kind of go either way. <laughs> Hamza is perfect. Okay, fire. Yeah. And uh, you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, one half of Dama Blanca. Uh, we producers. Yeah. You, so you, you you guys work on music together? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, one track on my last album. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Okay, so you have an interesting backstory. You want to try to explain where you're from? Because you're from France, but you're originally from Morocco, or, or what's I'm not name? from France. I'm from Belgium. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah Brussels, Sorry. but like it's like near from France. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm 24 years old, but I'm Moroccan. Yeah. But you you were born in Morocco? No, or? my background is Mor- like I'm Moroccan, but like I'm, I'm born and raised in Belgium. So you 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 spent your whole upbringing there. Okay. Yeah. So in Belgium, what what was your upbringing like, especially as somebody who's into music? Uh, Just growing up in in Belgium, in general, what was it like? Uh, like I don't know, like is <laughs> normal, bro. I don't know. Uh huh. Just pretty regular upbringing. Yeah. What, what were your parents like? My parents. Uh, my parents are Moroccan too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is that what what, what do they raise you like? Is it like strict upbringing? Uh, I didn't understand, bro. Strict? Like, was it, uh, were, were they, like, really disciplined? Did you have a very, like, uh, uptight upbringing? Like, were they chill? Oh, know, okay, yeah, no, they were they were chill, yeah, chill, yeah. Uh, my, my, my dad was listening to a lot of music, so he was listening to a lot of, of R&B, like Key Sweat, Jodeci, uh, a lot of artists, and uh, he he puts me on uh, on music. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. When did you get interested in making music? Uh, I think I was 14, 15, 15 years with, uh, it was like 50 Cent. Oh, really? Yeah. That was the one? 50 Cent, yeah, that was the one. It was my first album, was like a, a Get Rich or That Train. Mm. That was huge for me, too. Yeah, I've been listening to music for, or for rap for a while, but like that, that album just blew my mind. Yeah, that album is crazy. Yeah. So I started doing music with, uh, with 50 Cent. Like because of him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he was really inspiring to me, like his flows, like the the beats and everything. Like, but that period was like a a big period for hip hop, like yeah. 2000s. It was very yeah, true. It was crazy during that time period. It was like you had to you had to beef with Fifty Cent. Like if you were a rapper, everybody had to beef with yeah. him, or else nobody <laughs> nobody cared about you unless you had a beef with Fifty Cent. <laughs> it really was like that. Like people forget, but it was like every random rapper had to like make a song where they either dissed them or they were cool with them. It was it was a wild time. It would be like you know you now with Trump. Like you you can't just not have an opinion on Trump. You either you're, either, you're with him or you're against him, one way or another. You know? Yeah, definitely. So did you know anyone with a studio, or how did you start uh, making music? Um, I started doing music in my in my you know in my bedroom, just like writing and I started making beats mm-hmm. on Freddy Loops. So I was starting r- rapping on my beats and uh, I had a, I had a, a band with two guys of my of my neighborhood and uh, yeah, just uh, I started like that. Oh, that's yeah. what's up. So yeah, when did you actually start uh, recording? I started recording with like my first mixtape, H24. Um, that was the first time I was in studio and uh, uh, yeah, was there much of like a hip hop scene? What was the scene like around there? Was there a lot around, of rap shows? It was Young Thug. Young Thug was there was around this period like Young Thug and Rich Homie. Those were who around were inspiring period. you? Yeah, it was really inspiring. Yeah. What yeah. was it about it? Just like the creativity and their vocals. Yeah, the vocals, the melodies, the creativity, like everything. Like, uh, and it was like a big change. Like. I feel like it was a big change in, in the game when Young Tech came. That's definitely you know? true. Yeah. yeah. It was like Lil Wayne had kind of set the stage for then Young Thug to come Young along Thug, yeah. and do the super fucking weird version of Lil Wayne. Yeah, it's between Future and, and, Lil, and Lil Wayne. That's very, yeah. very true. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, okay, so did, did you sign early on or like how did you start to become popular? I started to be popular with my first mixtape, H24. But like it was like kind of underground, you know, uh-huh. in France, and uh, I became really like um, 
popular with like my last mixtape, 1994. And uh, yeah, right now I just dropped my, my, my first album on the first March. And yeah, man, we just, uh, just going. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So what, was there a certain song that really blew up? Yeah, Life. That's my biggest song. Okay. It was on my last mixtape, 1994. That's like the, the song who made me like really popular. Uh, how did that uh, how did that change things for you? Did you all of a sudden have all these opportunities to go on tour? Or, or? Yeah, tour and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of dates, a lot of uh, of uh, featuring, a lot of uh, you know a lot of things. Oh yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. I, I seen. Um, oh yeah, so what about performing with Drake in Paris? Uh, it was crazy. How did that come about? Um, there was that girl Tiffany Culver who uh -huh. was DJing for. For for Drake's tour, and uh, she was like bringing out artists in uh, every city that uh, that they did, and uh, she was like, "Yo, I wanna I wanna bring out uh, Hamza." So uh, it happens like that. Wow! Yeah. Did you actually get to meet him and stuff? No, 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 no. Was it a crazy experience just being in front of such a large audience? Yeah, it was crazy. Like the, but like the the stage was big. Like it was like literally like. A, a basketball pitch, like you know. Yeah. So I had to run on a stage. Like, it, was, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Dude, that must be crazy. Cause that yeah. that was my impression from when I saw Drake perform at the Staples Center. It was just like this dude is an athlete. Like he's just running back and forth on Yo, this huge stage crazy. for like two hours. I'm like, how the fuck do you do yeah, that every bro, night? That's crazy. That is amazing to me. He's jumping, running, singing. You know, that's yeah. crazy. And then I saw, but Migos open for him and like. Quavo and Offset were moving around, but Takeoff was like sitting down and shit. Like, he, he, he was just like chill. Like, he, he was de he was chill. so far on the opposite end of the spectrum of what, what Drake was doing that it was pretty hilarious to me. He, he might have had a cold or something. I don't know. Yeah, so that must have actually felt pretty crazy when uh, Noisy actually called you the 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 young thug of Brussels. Uh, yeah, it's like it's cool to to hear to hear it, but like I don't think I'm I'm the young thug of Brussels. Like. Mm. I'm just a Hamza of Brussels, you know. Right. Like, yeah, Young Thug was really like a, a big inspiration for me. Uh -huh. Yeah. What uh, what is your connection like with the fans where you're from? Like, is, is it the kind of thing where they're they're really really supportive of everything you're trying to yeah, do? Yeah, they're really supportive. Yeah. And it must yeah. be weird for them because they haven't really had anybody who's blown up as big as you in that area. Is that true? Uh, in Brussels. Yeah. No, there is an, another artist like Damso. Okay. And he's uh, like bigger than me, uh -huh. and so I think in Brussels we're the two biggest like rappers out there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You, you saw this video too. I'm assuming of Offset uh, reacting to you on YouTube. Yeah, on GQ Friends. That was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. You were the only one he liked. <laughs> he was making fun of everybody else. Yeah. Like he was turning it off yeah. before it even got going. He was like, nah, yeah. nah, nah. That, that, that was, was so. Hard. That yeah. That was hard, right? Yeah. That was crazy. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. Yeah, that it was so like good. I want to hear another track. Mm, yeah. <laughs> now that was crazy for me. Like, it's, uh, yeah, that was wild. Um, what, what's it like getting in the studio with him? Oh man, it's like no one else I've worked with, at least uh, out here in LA. Um, he doesn't even record with playback. This really? man like hears the whole thing before you know he like lays it down. So as he's laying it down. He already knows how it's gonna sound and everything. Really? That shit blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Are you sure you don't want to play it back?" And he's like, "No, no." <laughs> you just mean being able to hear the beat in That's the headphones? It. That's it. You oh. don't even want to hear his own vocals, nothing. He just be like writing down. He writes everything down. At least in the session we've been wearing to keep working at, um, super quick, and he just knows exactly what he wants. And by the end of it, it's just like boom, there it is. Yeah. And it's like finished and all that. Do you it's always crazy. recorded like that? Yeah. It yeah. never occurred to you that that was out of the ordinary. Sorry. It never uh, seemed strange to you to record like that? No, cuz I'm I'm working in my mind, you know, like I'm yeah. making melodies in my mind and writing and everything. So, I don't have to like hear my voice. Right. Yeah. yeah. You is that like another inspiration that you got from Young Thug to like not to just freestyle and and not write your stuff down or? No, no, no. You do write it down? Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um so how often do you record? You in there all the time working on music? Yeah, yeah, but like, um, it was like uh, really cool to meet uh, those guys, Dama Blanca. Mm -hmm. We had a, a, a great session, and uh, they they making like great music, great beats, and uh, yeah, 
yeah. it's fun. That's dope. What um what do you have uh, planned this year? Are you, are you staying out in LA? Uh yeah, I'm staying for a week in LA. Okay. And uh, then I'm gonna I have to go back in Europe because uh, I have some festivals and uh, and everything. But like uh, yeah, I like LA. That's what's yeah. up. You smoke weed out here? What do you think of it? Yeah, it's, it's, that's the best weed. It's great. Yeah. Okay, yeah, great. Because I got I got to give you guys these fucking massive blunts. Yeah, these things are. Yeah, yeah we got we got like these things. <laughs> they look crazy. It's, it's crazy. Bad. Trust me, it is. It's it's three point five grams of of bear woods in this. So if you guys want to, hell yeah, shit. good luck. Feel free to fucking get loaded on me. The, the one thing I will say though is that sometimes it can be hard to light it with just a lighter. Sometimes you need like yeah, a torch yeah. thing. Got you, got you. Yeah. Okay. They make even bigger ones too, dude. I had like a seven gram one at one seven. point. Seven shit. And, and well, no, I have one. That, I have one that has a whole ounce in it. It's An massive. Ounce? Shit, that's crazy. It's way too big. Yeah. <laughs> it's really like you, you could smoke it if you have like a bunch of people and you're just like having fun with it, but you you definitely wouldn't want to like just come home and just be like. Here we go. <laughs> massive fucking thing. Yeah. That's wild. Uh, yeah. What uh? What's your opinion of of America though, as opposed to where you grew up? Is it uh? Do you love it out here? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Like the culture is really different out there. Like people are nice, and the weather is nice. Like especially LA, I like mm. I like LA. Yeah. 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 You might go to like Kansas, and you might not have the same <laughs> positive impression <laughs> that you would have of of LA. It's like in the middle of the country. Like that's why you'll meet somebody, and they'll be like, "Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm coming to America," and they'll be like, "Yeah, I went to Vegas and, and New York City," and I'm just thinking like, "Wow, like, <laughs> there's nowhere else in the, in America that is yeah, anything yeah. like those other, those two places." You yeah. know, it's like mm. they have their own. It's like such a big country that you can just fit so many different worlds. You know, people it. in Paris are stressed. You know. Like everybody's working, everybody's running, everybody's like you know stressed, mm. and I feel like here is like a little bit more, you know, cozy vibe. Like everybody's mm. cool, you know. No, oh, yeah, there's yeah. definitely a chill vibe. Maybe to it's LA. the weed, you know. I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely at least partially that for sure. No, yeah, totally. Because I feel like every culture sort of gets the substance abuse problem that they deserve. Like when you go to fuck, well, like when you read articles about Russia and they're doing crocodile and yeah. like all these crazy, insane drugs, it's like, yeah, they have no economy, they have yeah. no hope, no no yeah. future. So what do they do? They start doing drugs that are going to kill you really fast. Yeah. Like, wow. And what do we do in America where we have it made and everybody's comfortable? Yeah. Not not everybody. But, you know, everybody's chilling. Everybody, what, they just smoke weed. Yeah, or now we got the opiate uh, uh, epidemic, so everybody's taking Xanax and heroin and stuff, but that's that's its own thing. Yeah. 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 Well, I just got deep for a second there. I know. <laughs> she got all sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, are there any uh, artists in particular that you, you'd really like to work with? Um, yeah, there is a lot. Yeah, there is a lot of artists like I uh, really like. Gunna, mm. uh, Lil Baby, uh, A Boogie. Mm. Uh, um, there is a lot of artists that, that I really like. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people who have blown up over the past few years with more of like a melodic. What do you sound. listen to right now? Me yeah. right now. That is a really good question. I'm going to actually default to my Apple Music right now and tell you what my most three. Okay, <laughs> wow. Well, on the way home from Coachella, I was listening to Nas Stillmatic, which is so <laughs> not like me to go back in time and listen to like <laughs> old shit. I never do that. That's cool <laughs> shit. Uh, okay, recently played. Oh my God, this is so weird. DJ Premier playlist on <laughs> Apple Music just because I wanted to put instrumentals in. So, yeah, like, literally um, in my brain, I just thought, like, who's a good producer? Okay. Yeah. DJ Premier, boom. That was, that's how that ended up. That's so, oh, and then I've been listening to the Lil Got It album a lot. Oh, yeah, Lil Got It is so, dope. Yeah. So he good. fire, yeah. So he fire, yeah. He's fucking mm-hmm. amazing. He's he's like, you know, and then uh oh I, I went and I listened to a couple of the older uh the baby mixtapes mm, because yeah. he's got his album out now and I wanted to hear what his old his old tapes were like. So I was like listening to some of his older stuff and then uh He got some few songs in it top hundred. Of America on Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, I also listened to the Billie Eilish album. <laughs> and I listened to Joe Budden for some <laughs> reason. I listened to the first yeah. Joe Budden album just because okay. I wanted to remember what, yeah. what it was like, you know. <laughs> and I was listening to Nipsey. And also, I listen to a lot of Young Scooter, too. Young Scooter is one of my nice. favorite rappers ever. And he's got an album called... Young the... Scooter is hard, too. Yeah. This is all hip-hop, though. Well, I guess besides Billie Eilish. I like Where the Rich, too. Roddy you know, Ridge is yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. fire, yeah. He's super dope. Yeah, I like. His song with Nipsey. Yeah, he's dope. Was ridiculous. Rex yeah. in the middle. That one's yeah, crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. That was super. The hook is crazy. I love Greedo too. I was like O3 Greedo. 
He's he's locked up right now, but he's like the best rapper. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. He's him. amazing. I'll play some of his stuff. He's from LA. Yeah. Yeah. And he's actually locked up for twenty years. Oh shit. He he says he's not gonna do the full twenty. He wrote me a letter from jail the other day actually, oh, where really? he says he's like, I'm gonna see you in like a year or two, and I'm thinking like, that is not what those cops are saying. But all right, <laughs> I hope I want to see you so. in a year or two. Yeah. But oh. like realistically, they gave you twenty, so you were being Damn. very optimistic. But I support that. Hopefully he, he get out. When you're locked up, what do you got besides just trying to be as optimistic as possible you know yeah it's dark but yeah um okay so if they want to go check your stuff out what are like the key songs that you would recommend that they go listen to just i don't know like life life or uh paradise um like people just have to look take a look at my take a listen to my last album paradise Mm. yeah and they'll get a feel for the the overall sound There is a lot of good songs and uh, a lot of different songs, a lot of different type of, of beats and, and vibes. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. All right, yo, I appreciate you uh, coming through and doing the show. It's dope being to meet you, man. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, bro. Thank you so nice much. To meet you. Appreciate you. Uh, no Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and go check out Hams on all those platforms as well. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, man. <laughs>